Hi, I'm Cullen Jennings. I'm the co-chair for the RTC Web Working Group, and I've been working on a lot of documents in this space. So I've got a fairly good handle on what's going on across the whole spectrum of the standards that we're working on in WebRTC. So the ITF for a long time has done the voice and video protocols that have been predominant across uh, the whole internet and are used in many applications. But what we're trying to do is bring those into browsers. So. Uh, a web browser today can't really do an interactive video where I can set up a, a phone call with you or we could do an interview like this, right? We could talk, we can build applications, we can embed it into games, we can bring it all different ways. Now it's a little bit different of a working group than many because it's not working on just one little detailed protocol it needs to build. It's working on taking lots of the existing protocols, combining them together, um, setting up sort of profiles for them and explaining how they can all be used in a browser. The real end goal that we have uh, for all the WebRTC work is to make it so that anyone can write a few lines of JavaScript code and can put together an application where they can actually have interactive communications with somebody using another browser. Now the exciting thing about doing this in browsers is it makes it really easy to distribute these applications widely because you can just put it on any web page and anyone can download it. It's lots of devices. Um, it's lots of reach to different places of the world. It makes it really easy for small developers to get this all up and going. It makes it really easy for large developers to rapidly change their application, iterate it, and get it out to users. So it's a pretty different way of doing voice and video applications than the stuff IETF was driving uh, 10 years ago that led to the sort of voice over IP revolution. But at the same time, um, <clears throat> it, it will we'll just really make it easier for people to get this done. So when we sort of start digging into what it is and what we need to do, there's a bunch of different parts of it. Okay? We're dealing with voice codecs. We need to select those. We need to say how the RTP and voice is transferred across uh, the internet. And there's lots of other working groups at ITF that are doing bits and pieces of those work. We're trying to combine them into an overall architecture. Similarly with video. We're also doing some really interesting stuff with peer-to-peer -peer data. So traditionally, uh, data to web browsers has always come from some server up in the cloud down to the you know, end uh, browser application. And this means it's always client server. What we're doing here is we're allowing two browsers to both send data directly between each other without sending it up through the cloud and back down to another one. This has a lot of implications from the bandwidth. It doesn't have to go up and back. And also has implications for sort of interesting things of allowing people that are using a cloud service to send data to each other directly without the sort of pervasive monitoring type things that might happen as we went through a cloud. So there's a lot of sort of different interesting technology that's all coming together in this working group. It's, some of it's done here at, at ITF. Some of it, the APIs into the browser, is actually being done with the W3C. So this is also an interesting effort in coordinating across a lot of standards organizations and a lot of different working groups. You know, it's, it's always a little bit sort of hard to predict where it's going to go. People are like, what's the killer app for it? And the, the killer app on this whole environment is th we're doing similar things that we've done before, but it's the ability to be able to do them really easily and embed them into other things. So traditionally, doing voice over IP collaboration systems has not been easy. It's been hard to build all that code and write it into a dedicated application. This makes it easy. And the idea is that some people doing games, for example, that know nothing about you know, how to do an, an interactive collaboration communication system can bring that into their game, perhaps. We'll start to see voice and video embedded into games where you talk to other players. It'll start being embedded into other vertical applications. It might be a healthcare application where you'll have the person you need to talk to will be right there in the application. So really it's just about taking communications and instead of using a separate communication application to talk to somebody, bring it into whatever other applications you need to do. I think that's probably going to be the, the place that in the short term is the most interesting part of it. Come to the meetings, come join the mailing list, come read some of the stuff. There's uh, quite a few good resources around it. They're ranging from um, books that have been written by people participating here to videos on the internet to tutorials at places. Write some code, play with it. It's working quite well right now. We've got a couple of the major browsers have it, parts of it working, and you can build applications. So figure out what it is you want to do with it and start playing with it. And if there's something missing, come bring a proposal to the working group of how to add the parts that you think it needs to do that it doesn't do for you, and let's make it better. Looking forward to seeing you.